Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Let's talk about crack. Oh God, no, not like that. <laughs> I'm talking about the crack. The crack at Wet Beaver Creek in Sedona. If you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Laurel and I moved from Minnesota to Arizona and now I make videos about what it's like to live here. I went to the famous The Crack in about mid-September and I'm here to tell you what I wish I had known before I went. I'm gonna break it down into what you should wear, what to bring, what to know before you go, and what to do once you get there. Let's start by what you should wear. A water wicking or some sport material shirt, long shorts or bike shorts. I would not recommend leggings because you will be way too hot. A hat, comfortable closed-toed shoes with a sturdy sole, a pair of sandals for when you get to the creek, and if you plan on swimming, wear a comfortable suit under your clothes and what to bring. A backpack, and I highly recommend adding a two liter bladder with a little hose, lots of extra water, sunscreen, granola bars or your favorite easy access trail snack, mini first aid kit, an extra pair of socks, and your fully charged phone. What to know before you go. This hike is not for the faint of heart. The hardest part about it is that it's seven miles round trip and, and there's hardly any shade. It's about three and a half miles in and three and a half miles back. About half of the hike is pretty flat and very sandy and the other half is jagged rock and steep, vigorous climbing. You follow the creek for most of the trail until you ascend up into the mountains and then you come out to the bluffs and the cliffs overlooking the creek. Since this was my first time ever doing this hike, I had no idea what to expect, where it ended, or really how long it was going to take. Most things said allow for about two and a half hours, but it took us probably about two hours in and two hours back. The way back I thought was cardio-wise easier because you were going downhill a lot more, but my feet were killing me by the end. A lot of the trail just felt like it kept going and going and going. The signs are not joking when they say to bring at least a gallon of water per person. My boyfriend and I each brought what we thought was enough water for the two of us, at least a two liter each and some extra water bottles, and we still ran out on the way back. Leave the floaties at home. They're heavy and they take up too much room, not worth it. And unless you want to carry a big cooler full of ice and beer seven miles, leave that at home as well. If you drive up to the trailhead from Phoenix like we did, allow for at least two hours to drive up. We parked in the Overflow Bell Trail trailhead and that was a pretty good spot. There are two parking lots, there's the regular Bell Trail and then the Overflow and they're pretty much about the same lengthwise. And it didn't really add too much extra to our hike. While you're hiking, you'll probably be looking at your feet a lot, but make sure you look up every now and then and take in all of the fabulous views. We got to the crack at about, <laughs> that just sounds funny. <laughs> we got to the crack at about 12.30 p.m. and stayed for about an hour. Um, I wish we would have stayed a little bit longer, but it did start to get very busy at that point and we wanted to be as socially distant as possible. There is a lot of spaces to be socially distant, especially during the pandemic. We also knew that it would be at least four hours until we got home. So we knew we had to kind of cut our day short in order to get back before it got dark. Now, what to do when you're there? You made it, congratulations. Now it's time to relax and have some fun. Cliff jumping and swimming is very popular. If you decide to cliff jump, please be careful. Use your best judgment. There are really tall cliffs, there are mid-sized cliffs, and then little tiny jump off places that aren't very tall at all. To answer your question, yes, I did jump off the cliff. All right, just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. Just do it. The water was really, really cold, but it felt really refreshing after that long, hot hike. There's a beautiful little waterfall, and the water is so clear, and I really enjoyed how blue the water was as well. You can really get a sense of how sacred this place is, and what a wonderful oasis it provides people. Absolutely be sure to pack in and pack out. That means that everything you take in with you, you have to take out. Leave nature better than you found it. Don't litter and keep it clean for other people to enjoy. Also, please don't smoke or listen to music with, on a speaker. We come into nature to enjoy fresh air and quiet, not to be subject to your cancer stick, vape juice, or unsolicited music. <laughs> My biggest advice is bring way more water than you think, use sunscreen before you go, some good shoes, comfortable clothes. 
I kid you not when I say I saw a girl wearing some denim shorts, like a cute tee, and a cardigan. Take the heat seriously, and if you go during the summer months, please be mindful. Pace yourself and know your limits. Other than that, I hope you have a great time at the crack at Wet Beaver Creek. And if you go or if you have gone, leave a comment below and I would love to read those and know what your experience was. I've got more Arizona videos coming, so please feel free to subscribe, comment, let me know what else you'd like to see. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.